and we're live. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How are you all? I'm here with the lovely and very talented Julie Mead, and I, I'm really excited. This is the official kickoff of our digital scrapbooking event. How are you, Julie? Oh, I'm doing great. I, I can't. It's fun seeing a lot of familiar names in from all over the world and we were just talking about how the whole international community seems to be showing up it's just amazing it's so cool yeah we're so impressed with how many people have shown up today we're going to give it a few minutes because there's people coming in like every second joining this call but it's going to be a really valuable day right julie oh yeah i i i hope i hope you guys um it's definitely a photoshop class if you don't do photoshop <laughs> oh wow that for me. Te technical issues, yeah. Have you got headphones, Julie? Okay. Um, oh, is that wow. really oh, sorry, guys. Bear with us for technical issues. Um, Julie, have you got headphones would be uh, the best solution there. Sorry, guys. Bear with us. It wouldn't be a webinar without something crazy happening. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Julie's going to be ready in just a minute, and then we're going to jump into all kinds of teaching today. Got the wrong, wrong. Wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Let me try my mic. I've got a mic. Let's see if that works better. Okay, perfect. Echo sound effects are great. Thank you for bearing with us, guys, in true form. Yeah, I'm, I'm echoing, but I think it's all um, from Julie's side in terms of the headphones. So <laughs> I need to start singing some techno music, Angela said. <laughs> You guys are cracking me up in the comments. Rest assured, we are going to be absolutely fine in about 30 seconds. Now, beatbox, Jay said. No, no, no. Sorry, guys. No, At this rate, we, we may have to actually uh, end and restart the broadcast. But, Julie, have you got some headphones? I think that would be the absolute best uh, wow. solution here. Let me let me let me let me Sorry. Let me yeah, let me Julie, know. it's because you've got your speakers on, so we just need headphones. Oh, okay. Hold on, I'm going to type in the chat, guys. Oh, there we go, guys. Okay, so I've just muted Julie while she gets set up. Um, thank you for bearing with us, though. So, Julie, you, you won't be able to uh, be heard at the minute, but I'm waiting just until you've got the headphones plugged in. Um, and look at everyone being so patient and lovely. <laughs> Maria said, I know it sucks, but it's pretty funny. Of course it is. This kind of stuff always happens. But <laughs> um, So, yeah, Julie, do you want to give a thumbs up? Have you got headphones? hopefully somewhere um i, I would have a, a route around uh earbuds from the cell phone anything like that um hopefully we'll be set up in just a second um but yeah guys today julie is going to be teaching about brushing and masking and uh possibly through sign language tina said <laughs> uh ironically everything was 100 percent fine uh, as we're get, getting set up for this. And of course, it only starts after we go live. So um, you're going to have to put up with me entertaining you guys for a few minutes. We need to improvise here. Um, but for the people who don't know, I'm going to give a little bit of context about what today is um, and what this week is. We are launching our official digital scrapbooking section. So it's going to be a ton of fun. We've got Julie, we've got Anna Aspinez, we have Tanji Baxter, all doing some live webinars this week. Ooh, let's see Julia's back to celebrate our, uh, our new launch. Julie, okay. are you with us? Okay, now I have, a he I have an echo from you. Ta-da! That it's sounds okay. great on my side, yeah? Okay. Okay, everyone in the comments, let us know, does that sound okay to you guys now? Now we've got rid of the techno echo, let us know. Sounds okay, Francine says. Amazing. Sounds good, Rita says. I think we might be here. Yes, guys, we made it. Let's pretend that the... Uh... <laughs> great, great. Sounds great. Okay, fantastic. And look at you guys, you're all waking up in the comments. Loads of you guys here. Right, thank you so much. So we're going to pretend that the last four and a half minutes didn't happen, guys. It's our little secret. 
yeah. and so we're about to <laughs> about to get into the main event. So Julie, thank you for uh, for finding some suitable headphones. Well, thanks for being patient. Absolutely, it's fine. Like I say, there's always something that goes wrong with these things. My buddy Dustin uh, at Retro Supply, he did a webinar and he said it was his worst nightmare where the internet kicked him out about a dozen times. Um, he had to rejoin all this kind of stuff. So it's always a risk, right? It goes with the territory, but I think we're going to be all set now. Yeah, anything technical. Yeah. It's always problems. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just kind of gave a, a bit of an intro um, into this event. And I, I can see a couple of people have a frozen picture. That might be your internet. I think we're okay now, um, hopefully. So just give it a refresh if there's any issues. It tends to happen when there's a lot of people, like there's hundreds of people live right now. Um, sometimes it can get a bit overwhelmed. So give it a refresh. I think for the vast majority of you, it seems to be working. And I promise we're going to, um, we're going to get the replay up for anyone who's having issues with their internet or streaming it. Okay. So Julie, would you mind for everyone introducing yourself a bit about your background and what you're going to be teaching today? Sure. Um, I started digital scrapping a very long time ago. Uh, late 90s, 1994, I don't know, whenever Photoshop first came out, I decided to um, get into that. I really enjoyed technology. Um, about 2004, I decided to open my own store. Mm -hmm. And from there, I uh, grew and grew and it had a lot of new designers come in. So I run a store, I also design and um, I'm a school teacher and I love to teach. So I'm really excited today. Today I'm in my element. Uh, I wanted to say a couple things about digital scrapping. For those of you that are new to digital, you might be or have been tradition, uh, traditional scrappers with paper and things. And I wanted to show you just real briefly if I can. See that big closet back there? It's yeah, full. I do. It's full of digital scrapbook, <laughs> traditional, <laughs> excuse me, not traditional scrapbooking supplies. Mm -hmm. I have, I've collected a lot of things over the years, but I don't, so what I use them though for now is I create my art with all those papers. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> so I cut them up and tear them up. I use Mod Podge to hold them down. I add paint to it. So those of you that used to be traditional, you can use all those papers for other things. <laughs> so anyway. And, and um, Julie, for, for the few people who so, don't perhaps know what uh, scrapbooking and digital scrapbooking is, I know a lot of people here are massively into it, but I also know some of our community just through this event are finding it for the first time. And they're like, what is digital scrapbooking? Would you mind kind of explaining from your perspective? Well, for me, I started out with traditional. So I would go to a brick and mortar store. Um, I would buy my digital, I'm oh, excuse me, I keep saying that. I would buy my supplies like paper, um, and paper was individual, about 50 cents for a piece of paper. I would buy my elements. And then in the 90s, I found a uh, book that talked about digital scrapbooking. And it really appealed to me because I've always liked computers, always have liked them. So I started playing around and learning Photoshop. And I thought Photoshop at hard, it was hard at first, but I started learning about the layers. I started learning about how to use it. And about four or five years later, I ended up starting my own store, mm -hmm. uh, making my own supplies. So we've got digital scrapping, where we make, uh, as a designer, we make our papers, we make all of our elements. Um, we call the papers backgrounds. We call the embellishments elements. And through the years, since I started my store so long ago, I have seen the digital community, oh, it's, it had to create standards. So we started out with things kind of all over the place. And then we developed from looking at traditional papers, they were 12 by 12. So we ended up making our digital scrapbook papers 12 by 12 with a high resolution. And that was something else that had to be developed. What resolution was gonna be a standard from designer to, 
designer. So that's kind of how things got started. Um, in the early days, there just was a lot of growing. And I have to say this, the traditional stores, the, bro the brick and mortar stores, they didn't uh, like us. <laughs> Oh, really? I've heard no. this consistently, actually. No, it was we, like really we, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they just like, and I, I've had a lot of friends that are traditional and they were confused. They didn't understand it and thus they didn't like it. But it's mm. come a long way in 15 years. In 15 years, it's a lot more accepted now. Uh, yeah. People love digital because you don't have the glue mess and scissors and all that stuff you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you can undo a bit easier. And oh, it's the that, layers, so. I, yeah, I can't stand going to traditional now because when I put something down, it's stuck. And yeah. I have that no back button. <laughs> and I miss that. So that's. Perfect. So, um, jo Joanne is asking to see some examples of the kind of work. So, Joanne, we are going to show um, a ton of uh, Julie's products and stuff that she's worked on at the end, but you're going to see a real example. So, she's going to be yeah. teaching for the next 30 minutes or so and show you how to achieve some of the techniques that she's talking about. Yeah, are we ready um, for by, that? by the way, I think we are in just a second. Yeah, just for anyone, um, I think majority are fine. If you're having audio and video issues, people are being so helpful in the comments. So, um, just below the live, clock in the bottom left of the video click on get audio slash video help and then i think there's something um, about choosing a compatibility option so if you're still having issues um that seems to be fixing it for most people and thank you guys for being so helpful in the comments we uh we really appreciate it so um yeah julie is our first guest as part of our, our digital scrapbooking event this week and why i'm so excited is i've been a huge fan of digital scrapbooking for a lot of years and we know that actually i think it's something like 26% of our audience are into it at Design Cuts, yet we've never fully catered to it. You know, it's a really popular thing. It's increasingly popular. I think it's just so creative. It's it's an amazing, if you do it professionally or for a hobby, it's such a fantastic creative outlet. And I go way back with people like Julie. We've known each other for years. And so now the fact we're kind of coming together to create this incredible new section to bring some edu educational resources, I feel like we're finally taking it as seriously as we should have been. Yeah. So it should be a lot of fun. Julie, what are you teaching today? What am I teaching today? I'm going to be teaching about, well, later on, we're going to be talking at the end of the program about a set of brushes and photo masks that you're going to be getting. And I'm going to be showing them to you. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about uh, the Photoshop brushes. And I'm also going to be showing you the photo masks that I have and how you can combine those two. <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. if you're an old pro, uh, you might learn a new thing or two, or maybe it's just a brush up for you. But I want to ask everybody, in Photoshop, brushes come in an ABR format. Does anybody know what ABR stands for? Oh, let's I'm see in the curious. comments. <laughs> ABR. It will come in that format. Okay. By the way, Julie, there, there's a little delay in the comments. When this many people show up, it can be like a five, 10 second delay. So okay. just if you're wondering, um, Deborah says Adobe brushes. She's right. It's it's A for Adobe Photoshop and then B R for brushes. And why it's A B R, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's what it means. Adobe Photoshop brushes and the B R. So okay. you're gonna be getting um I'm gonna be using my um Wacom tablet and my tool, my pen that comes with it. So let me get that set up. Perfect. And so in just a sec, Julie's going to share her screen and we're going to learn along with her and some of her yeah. techniques. But for anyone who isn't familiar with Julie, she's honestly like a veteran in the scrapbooking world. She's super respected. She's been doing it for a lot of years and bringing so much value to that community. And she's just very, very well thought of and loved by digital uh. scrapbookers today. So excited You're really to have you kind, here. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my biggest fear with doing a Photoshop class is somebody going to ask me a question and I won't know the answer. And I, <laughs> it's, I it's find okay. We're here to scrapbooking, not Photoshop advanced yeah. tags. You well, know, it's, scrapbooking. 
it is such a learning process. Photoshop is so huge. There's so much to learn. So if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I will tell you that. I don't know the answer. <laughs> so um, so um, is it okay if I go ahead and start sharing my screen? Yes, absolutely. And Maria, I just saw your comment. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying it now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, guys, thank you for being so active in the comments as well. It's great to see so many of you showing up. It should be fun today. All right. It's my Here we go. So I can All see right. that absolutely fine. All right. Well, first thing I want to show you um, in the free file that you'll be getting later today, and this file will come under uh, Design Cuts License yeah, we're, Policy. We're, we're, Exactly. We're going to be posting this for you guys um, later on today. So we will most likely share it in our Facebook group, but do not worry. If you go back to the page where you registered for this webinar, we're going to put an updated link with where you can go and access this freebie. So very kind of Julie to provide that. Yeah. Okay. So I want to tell you about what you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting all of these brushes. And what I have included in the file is the ping files of all the brushes. This is what I normally do with my digital scrapbooking brushes. You're gonna get watercolor brushes, then you're gonna get some paint splatters, and then at the bottom, you're gonna get some photo masks. Now, you'll notice I've included three ABR brush files here. The first one is just called brushes. The next one is called brushes preset. And then the last one is the splatter only. And let me show you what's in them. Okay. All right, let's go up here. I love a good brush, by the way. Yeah, who doesn't? Okay. <laughs> um, one thing I want to share with all of you, you have, a, you have three options what can show when you're looking at this. So you go over here to that little uh, cog looking thing. And you go down and you can, I have all three of these checked. The brush name, the brush stroke, and the brush tip. So let's take off the brush stroke. And now you just see what the tip looks like. And oh, then my... if you want to see the stroke, when you hold it and pull it across your page, this is what it will look like. It doesn't do anything. It just, uh, it doesn't turn or anything like that. So those are the basic brushes. It's the brushes with the splatter brushes, all right? Then I have the brush presets. And what I want you to notice, I'm gonna go back up here just for a second. It's the same brush and you'll see how it looks here. And then let's go down and see how it looks here. It looks different, okay? Yep. I'm going to have you look here. I'm going to go over to my brush settings. And these are my settings for the plain brushes. Nothing is checked. Now I want you to notice what happens when I go down to the presets. Do you see all the different options that come up? Mm -hmm. Okay. These yeah, different options settings. Yep. is what I have set these two and I set and I save them as a special brush preset for you so they have more of a water look to them. Um, so here is what it looks like when you drag it across compared to up here it looks quite a bit different. So yeah. that that's why I saved them as two different brush files for you. So you can use them like that. And then I've also got the splatters saved for you separately. Um, you can, because sometimes I, you just need a good splatter brush and you don't want to mess with all those others. All right. So let's go to some fun ways how to use these. Okay. On the, this page here, um, I'm going to, now you can use your mouse, but I'm going to use my, uh, tablet for this and my pen. So we're going to kind of look at the difference here. Okay, when I um, just click on it, there is the brush. Now I can change the flow and that just makes it a little bit stronger. I can change the opacity. 
All right. But this is the brush. Even that is so I, pretty. The, the, the details of, uh, is that watercolor? Yep. It's a watercolor brush. Nice. When I drag yeah, it, cool. nothing really special happens. But if I go down to here, choose that same brush and drag it across here, see, I get a much prettier look. Now that's, oh, wow. you can change the flow of that. You can change the opacity of that. And it's the same brush. It's the same brush as what's up here. All right. So you, you have a lot of options with your brushes. All right. You can actually go back to this plain brush and you can set these, play with play around with these. You can even take the brush presets that I've made for you and change all kinds of options here. So play around with those. You can lower the jitter, the size jitter. You can have the angles. You, and you'll notice down here, they change. It'll, it'll show mm. you kind of what it looks like. So some uh, of these... Guys, the this is a tip that we give all the time. It's fantastic to get digital products like this and resources and work with them right out of the box. But do go in and have some fun and tweak settings and experiment and play around because you never know what you can create that's highly original. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of options. Some of these are just turn off and on. They have no options. You just turn it off or you turn it on. So you have a lot of options. I do want to talk about the smoothing tool and I'm going to add a new layer. And when you have smoothing checked and I'm going to go back up here to the top because it shows best when I use just a plain brush. All right. And this one's a hard edge brush. And I assume, but I've learned as a school teacher, never assume anything. When you want to enlarge or decrease the size of a brush, use those left and right brackets, okay? So I'm just holding those bracket keys to enlarge or decrease the size of it. Yeah, now, just, on your, just on your keyboard. And um, right. it took me a few years to learn that. I know it's such a, a basic keyboard shortcut, Julie, but honestly, for years, I would have to go up to the menu, drag the slider along to resize my brush. It was such a time saver when I figured out it's just those bracket keys right there on your keyboard. Yeah, absolutely. And I just keep my fingers on those two bracket keys all the time when I'm working with brushes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the smoothing tool right now, um, you have to have it checked and then you can adjust up here at the top your smoothing. Now I have it at zero and let's see how good I can draw a draw something like a, a curve. Oops, I need to change the opacity to 100 and I'm gonna change the flow too. All right, oh, I went back. All right, so let's try to create a, okay, see, see how it's not smooth? Mm -hmm. It's edgy yep. and stuff. Okay, so if you will bump this up, it drags your brush a little bit Oh, let's see here. Come on. There we go. All right. It it will make it so much smoother. And what tool was that, Judy? It's this it's the same brush, but mm -hmm. click on smoothing. Yep. And then play with this smoothing option up here. So you yeah, you have control over it. Yeah. Yeah, you can add more smoothing. If you don't have any smoothing, then it's up to you to be smooth. And even the most skillful hand, it's really hard. It's really hard to be smooth. Mm -hmm. So this is a great tool to use. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that. About that's an incredible that. tool. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. All right. Okay. So that's a couple of tips I wanted to share with you. And I'm going to review real quickly. You can play around with these, these different options here in your brush settings. All right. The brush settings is right here. And if you don't see your brush settings, go up here and make sure it's checked. All right. And then you can get different looks to your brushes. And I do want to say one more thing before I forget. Let's say you're using my brush presets. 
and you want to change these brushes. You, you're playing around and you're doing all these changes to it. And then you decide, oh, but I want to go back. What did she have them set at? You don't have to do anything but click on it again. And it will then automatically go right back to my settings. So you don't have to worry about playing with those. You are, you're not changing anything. Okay? So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. Okay. Here's one of the photo masks that I'm giving you in this uh, free file that I'm sharing. And I wanted to share with you a really quick thing to do with photo mask. What you, I've already added a background. So what you do, I'm going to take that off. Put your photo mask first, add a paper on top of it, and then hold down your Option or your Alt key, and then you'll see that down arrow. When I click on that down arrow, it clips it to the one below it, and so you'll see exactly what is below it, okay? Now, I can still move this. See, I can move it so that I get different looks, what's there. And that's that's a pretty easy, basic thing to do. But and um, Julie, I if do... we right click on it, we can release the clipping mask as well, right? Just so people know how to do that. Oh, so... you know what? I'm on a Mac and I don't have a right click. So oh, I so... would just. Yeah, if, if, if you hold control and click, then it will okay. uh, yeah. right click for you. So okay. yeah, so, so if we do that and, and just right click on, on the layer instead of between the layers. I think that should oh, do okay. it. Okay. All right. Um, if I want to unclip it, I just hold that option or that alt key down, and then I can unclip the mask. And can you guys see you have to hover between the layers? Because often when people are trying to apply a clipping mask, they click right. on the layer itself. You need to go on that little line between, between the two layers, and that's where you get that arrow. I hope you all see that little arrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that's one thing to do with a clipping mask. All right. Now, something kind of fun that you can do bringing in to this. Clip this down here will create a mask. All right. So white means it, everything that's showing. If I put any black on it, black will hide it. So I'm going, I've got this white box activated. I'm going to choose a brush and you can go choose one of those brushes preset. We'll choose a different one and I'm going to just start brushing over it. Whoops. Oh, excuse me. I put the, it should be right here. All right. Mm -hmm. I meant to put it down here. Okay. So go to your clipping mask, click where I showed you before down here where the mask is, we're gonna put a white mask on it, and then we're going to start hiding parts of it. Oops, I am having trouble, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, you so are now we're, need... we're on the mask. So guys, we've applied a mask to your original shape layer, right. not to the texture layer above it. Yeah, I'm gonna hide this just for a second. So here's my mask. I've applied a mask to it by just clicking on this down here at the bottom, add a vector mask, okay? Mm -hmm. I've got my, paper clip to it. This white is going to be activated, but I want to hide some of it. So you've got to make sure black is showing. So I've got black and then I'm going to take one of my brushes and I'm just going to start erasing part of it. So maybe I don't want all of this in the middle showing and I can just start erasing it. If I don't like the flow, I can bring that up and it makes it a lot stronger. Okay? Yep. So that's a fun thing you can do with brushes and masks. And I, it, Tom, this is going to be online for a while so people can come yeah, back and look at it. Absolutely. Yeah. People can watch the replay. And okay. what I lo love here, Julie, is the level of control it gives you because we're doing this on a single mask shape. But if you're doing something like collaging, where you're building up layers and layers and layers, you want to be able to customize. You don't just want these blocky shapes kind of on top of each other. You can actually blend them together. And like, 
you know, hide parts of it and get other parts sh showing through stronger. So you can really create an original piece of art very quickly using these basic techniques right here. Right. Yeah. Good. Good tip. All right. The next one I want to show you is some fun things you can do with a photo mask. One of the really simple things you can do is I hold down the command key. I think it's control key on a PC and I click on the thumbnail picture and then I get what's called those little marching ants around it. I've always called them little marching ants. <laughs> yeah, that's the official term, I think. <laughs> it's actually marching yeah. tool. So anyway, yeah. it's got the marching ants around it. I'm going to hide that layer so you can see them. There's my marching ants. Can you see them, Tom? I can, yeah. Okay. Um, I've got a new layer called paint, and I've got a pretty turquoise blue chosen. I'm going to choose the paint tool. And then I'm just going to drop some paint in there. Okay. And when I hit command D, control D, it undoes the marching ants. Now that's pretty cool, but let's make it better. So let's <laughs> go back a couple steps and let's go back to load selection. I'm still on that paint layer and let's go get my brushes and get one of those preset brushes. Okay, and I'm going to lower the opacity. And now I'm going to brush right on here. Oh, what happened here? Slow that down. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of brush right on there. All right, and then I can change colors. Get a pink. And I could just kind of blend them in. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. And then when I get done, I just hit that command or control D to remove the marching ants. And then I have a much prettier paint on my paper to play with than just dumping from the paint box in it. Okay. Just mm -hmm. dumping the paint in it. So that's, Fun, want something fun you can do with your photo mask. Okay. All right, let's go to my next one. Thank you for getting your questions in, guys. We probably have um, about 15 minutes, um, by okay. the way, Julie. And so um, we will try and get to some of your questions afterwards. But potentially, Julie, would you be happy to answer some follow up questions in the Facebook group if oh, we can't get to yes, your everyone? Absolutely. Absolutely. I that. Thank you. Okay, the next one I have, this is kind of a fun one to play with. You have a background and I've got it above it. And I'm going to take this photo mask or this mask and I'm going to double it. I like to double by hitting Command J. And I know there's lots of different ways to double that, but you can see I've down here, I've got the same layer. Now I'm going to turn that top layer transform it. Let's just turn it to the right. And then I'm going to place it where I want it to be. I'm going to put both of these into a folder. And if you look down here, there's a folder. So now they're both in a folder and I'm going to open my background and I'm going to again, hover between them to clip the background to the group. And now it's both of them. It, it no. shows both of those. Mm -hmm. And you can change them and move one of them at a time to kind of get them where you want them to be. That's a really beautiful texture, actually. Is that like an old wallpaper or something? It's a paper I created. And I it, it's... Uh, in one of the sets that I'm selling at DC now, D Design oh, Cuts. Cool. <laughs> All right. cool. Everyone calls it DC. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I wanted to show that. When you put things into a group, into a folder, you get you can link to it, but you get to move everything around that's in that folder. 
So mm -hmm. you don't do anything that's destructive. All right. That's one thing I want to point out. That's my last option here. You've um, a lot of times we use photos and clip them to mass. Okay. We can write on that photo mask. I'm going to change to black, I'm going to choose a brush. And let's say I don't like so much of the photo that's missing. So I can just start painting onto that. I'm going to get a different, let's see, flow this and opacity. That'll make it show a little better. Okay, there we go. So I can just start brushing in to cover up those holes. Uh, yeah. But I don't like that option because I'm, it's destructive. It's, I've already got that photo mask in place and it's, I can't go back. If I change my mind, I'm stuck with the paint that I put on that layer. So I'm going to show you a much better way to do that. So I'm going to unclip it just for a second. I am going to make a group and I'm going to put the photo mask in the group and I'm going to add a new layer and that I'm going to name paint. All right. So we're going to go back up here to the photo. I'm going to use that clipping option. It's clipped to it. Down here where it says paint, I'm going to activate it. And now I'm going to start painting. And guess what? I haven't hurt the photo mask at all. It's still there. And, and I haven't done anything. So when you put things into a group, it is less destructive because you can add a new layer to it. All right. And I can just keep painting on top of this and adding to it and doing whatever I need to. Okay. Um, let me get out of this, Tom. Sure thing. And first of all, everyone leave a comment if this has been helpful so far, because I think there's been some really, really good techniques covered here. And I love how non-destructive you went, Julie, because I used to work much more destructively and it's just such a mess. Like you, you can't go back, you lose what you're doing. It can yeah. get real messy real fast. And so all of these techniques are like exactly how people should be doing it. You know, you preserve your yeah. layers. You can go back. You can edit anytime. Thank you, by the way. We can see Annette, Lily, Kay, Mel, Kirsten, yeah, Deborah, guys. Nora. Yeah, thank you wanna, you that's what's so great about Photoshop. You can do things and not be destructive. I used to erase things because I didn't want something showing, but then I could never go back. So mm -hmm. use yeah. those photo masks learn how to use them you can find all kinds of youtube videos on using photo mask if if you're not quite understanding them um and you can always contact me i'm on uh facebook or you can leave comments at design cuts on facebook but i really like to help people and so you can I, understand I love this Julie, I, I know we're having you on today as part of the whole digital scrapbooking section launch, but we would love to have you back on one of our weekly hangouts, perhaps, just to teach a little more. Oh, oh of, I of love that. Topics. I yeah. have a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing that. As we have um, maybe five or ten minutes, and then um, as you might have seen, guys, we've got a series of live classes and webinars happening as part of this launch. So next up in about 15 minutes, I'm jumping on with Anna Aspinez, who is also super talented and so giving of her time. Um, yeah. And so be sure if you haven't yet, if you check out Design Cuts, there is a top strip where you can explore all the live classes and you can jump over and, and register and join for the upcoming yeah. ones, including yeah. Anna's. I do want to say one thing about Anna. We've mm -hmm. known each other since boy, maybe 1999 or 2000, when digital scrapping was just getting started. That's how mm -hmm. her and I first met. So, I love it. And she's she, really she, nice. spoke, she is, and she spoke so highly of you as well as one of the kind of originals in the space. And yeah. I love how committed yeah. you guys are to your craft. Yeah. 
Um, so, Julie, would you mind sharing your screen again and showing people your amazing new shop at Design Cuts? Because there is so much cool stuff in there. Oh, sure. Awesome. Uh, I believe you have it open in, in one of your browser tabs. I do. I do. Hang on. Cool. Um, HMCA is saying wonderful presentation, not overwhelming amount of uh, info provided. And I think that's so true. It's some of the fundamentals that are so important to get right. We didn't want to overwhelm you guys with a billion techniques. Okay. There we go. Awesome. So guys, as part of this new section, we're so excited because at Design Cuts, you know, we only like to work with the best people in the industry the most talented, the most lovely people, and only accept their very best products. And so in true form to launch this new section for digital scrapbooking, we've teamed up with people such as Julie and Tanji Baxter tomorrow and Anna Aspinez and these fantastic, talented creatives. And we couldn't be in better company. So we love their work. I've admired Julie's work for a lot of years, and I'm so excited to show off her new store that just opened at Design Cuts. So Julie, do you mind talking us through maybe some of your um, your more popular products here and, and clicking through and showing people in a bit more detail? Because there's some amazing stuff there. Well, as you can tell, I really like watercolor. And all of these things that are watercolor here, I created with real watercolor and then I bring them in and I use certain techniques to extract them out of the actual background that I used. I'm also a big fan of mixed media. Um, I just have a variety of products here. Over the years, things have developed and changed. You'll find um, a lot of backgrounds. A lot of textures. Oh, the, the bad negative overlays look stunning. Oh, those, of of those are actually good. old negatives that I found. And I they must be from the 1910s, 20s. Or I don't know. They're really old. Really old. Mm -hmm. And then can, I can made them look old. Them? <laughs> can, we, can we click through and see them closer up? I'd, I'd love to show them off to people. Yeah. They look great when you put them over really a photo cool. and blend with them. It's stunning. So that yeah, might I'm be a, I'm a sucker for vintage textures. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, if, if we go back, I'd love just to look at a few others because there's so much variety. And what we've tried to do with this new section is we welcome not only some of the best digital scrapbooking creators out there, but we've tried to find people with quite different styles. And would you agree, Julie, it's, um, perhaps your style is quite different from, for example, Anna's. You're both oh, fantastic yeah. in your own right, but, you know, you really tick different boxes, I would say. Yeah, but I really think our products, in fact, all the designers that I see here, our products blend together really great. You'll find mm -hmm. something here that will go with something from another designer. So don't be afraid to mix and match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and there is, there's so much. I mean, we've got five pages here of incredible products, and that's just Julie's store in this new section. So it's really worth having a dig around. And if you guys actually check out just below this video, there is a green button that says check out Julie's store. If you click that, it will take you through to exactly what we're looking at right now. And even if you are watching and you want to check it out later, it's so worth clicking that, opening that tab, and then having a look um, once we sign off uh, in the next few minutes because Julie's put so much hard work into this stuff. It is a ton of fun to play around with. And yeah, it for really the people is. Who, it is. Like, I, I've played around with it myself as we were testing everything, getting your section ready. It's just really, really, really cool. And um, it makes me want to get back into like creating photo composites and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I see a question from Kate. She said mm -hmm. she'd love to see how I use examples of my stuff. And um, when I design things, I have a certain or a special way in mind how I perceive them being used. And what's really fun as a designer is to see how other people use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they use it in unexpected ways. But um, Kate, that's a good idea. I, I like your idea of how, to, how I use my products. Yeah, I, I would love to see that. And we're definitely going to be running some contests throughout this week as well, where people okay. can submit their various designs and win some very cool stuff. So we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And feel free, you know, share it on social media, share it on our Facebook group that's linked up throughout the website. We can't wait to see what you guys create and try and offer support and feedback and answer any questions. Great, great. 
You guys can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook community. There's a lot of different places on there. So you can contact me there. Love it. And um, I can see we do have quite a few questions. I'm sorry, guys, just uh, due to a few technical hitches at the start, we may have to pick those up in the Facebook group. So if you uh, if you check out on all the pages where we're talking about the live classes, there is a prominent link at the bottom where you can go and check out the Facebook group. So please do ask away in there. Um, and Julie's very kindly offered to continue the chat and answer all of your questions uh, in that Facebook group. And someone mentioned about the freebies as well. Guys, we're going to be updating uh, the page where you registered for this free class. We're going to be adding a link there in the next few hours uh, for the freebies that Julie kindly provided. Okay. So thank you so much, Julie. And for everyone who's um, hopefully just clicked on the green button and opened up Julie's amazing store, do go and browse around. And because it's Design Cuts, realize you're not only getting the best licensing out there, so you don't have to worry about using it on commercial projects and that kind of thing. But equally, we are the only marketplace where you can shop around. And the more you buy, the more you save. So it's well worth scooping up a lot of Julie's products, whichever ones stand out to you, um, and getting a fantastic saving on your order. And of course, if you get stuck, our customer care team are here. They're super lovely, hands-on, and happy to walk you through anything at all that you need help with. So you are not on your own. Don't worry, we've got you. Uh, thank you all for your kind comments. I really appreciate it. But I, I love doing this. I really love doing this. Well, I, I think the, uh, the teacher in you shines through. You're a bit of a natural. <laughs> so, Julie, thank you for being so giving of your time. And we're so excited to have you back on for hopefully a bunch more of these in the future. But you've been fantastic today. We appreciate it. Yeah, great. I hope I can come back and do another webinar for you. A hundred percent. Consider okay, it. Thanks so much, Julie, and welcome to the Design Cuts Marketplace. We couldn't Thanks. be happier to have Thanks, you with Tom. us. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Thanks everybody. So much for jumping on, guys, and go register for Anna's um, webinar happening in seven minutes. If you jump back on the main Design Cuts website, you can go and attend that live class. I will see you guys in just a minute. But you've been fantastic, so we appreciate you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye,